Hello, Westminster, Rula here. Um, most of you have seen me or heard me by now. Uh, but on this first meditation I present to you, I wanted to tell you a little more about myself. Um, so I come to you from a place where religion and state are, are tightly uh, intertwined together in a very unhealthy way. Uh, I mean, I cannot think of any other way where state and religion can be together in a healthy way. Um, but anyway, I also come from a war zone. So I have lived through 30 years of events similar to what we have experienced in the last week. Um, so I've been in the middle of it. I've um, seen some violent encounters. Um, I've heard bombings and shootings and all of it, and, and it's bad. It's, it's really, really bad. Uh, but the truth is that eventually you get used to it. And you, you kind of develop thick skin. And, um, you know, when, when uncertainty and unexpected disruptions just become part of your normal life, and when that happens, you just go back to a, like a normal mode of being. And I put normal between quotes because like it's, it's our redefinition of normal. And probably 2020 has shown a good example of that. Uh, so ultimately, you just go back to where you were before. Um, and so as I watch the events uh, unfold in this country, um, I've been noticing a very unpleasant familiarity. Um, in case you haven't noticed, it's been messy lately. Um, and I, I think it has been messy for longer time. We're just uh, starting to see, to see it in full dimensions. And um, the rift in the society is getting bigger and bigger, and it's even expanding to, to families. And, uh, dividing family members and even church. Uh, and although these days might be some of the most unifying in the history of humanity, and yet we find ourselves more divided than ever. So um, as, as an observer who's, you know, coming from the outside and um, haven't been part of a society that is very highly divided, I wanted to send the light on um, what I think is an important constituent of a divided society and, and that I think is uh, the first obstacle to reaching a resolution and that is um, justified self-righteousness. A passage from Philippians comes to mind, um, Philippians 4 and uh, the beginning of the chapter where Paul had heard of a conflict that is happening between the leaders of the church, uh, two female leaders, and, and Paul writes to them and he urges them to be of the same mind in the Lord. Now, this is what the English Bible translates the original Greek to, but the Greek verb actually relates to deep inward feelings. Um, not only the intellect, there is a different Greek noun that Paul would use when he speaks about the mind as just a, an intellectual tool. So it's a term that is difficult to translate into English, but um, it, because it, it combines the visceral and the cognitive aspects of thinking. So, so Paul's urge to be of the same mind can also be understood as being of the same heart. Now, I do understand that um, being of the same opinion or holding the same views is humanly uh, impossible and unhealthy. But um, different views do not have to be mutually invalidating. Um, so when we cannot be of the same views, um, and according to the scriptures, we can still be of the same mind. 
and um, and I just ask, what does it take? What does it take to be of the same mind when you don't agree with someone on over something? And and how would our society be different if Paul's words are to inform our differences or disagreements today? I'm often reminded of the words of Dr. Roger Nishioka, who is a um, professor in uh, Columbia Theological Seminary, one of the conferences I attended last year in Zephyr. Uh, he was the speaker, and he talks about the differentiation between uh, affirmation and transformation. Um, and he says that affirmation happens when you're always uh, in, in conversation with those who hold the same views, who have had the same experiences, those, those who look like you and think like you and believe like you. And, and so what happens is that you keep affirming them and, and they affirm you. But transformation only happens when you choose to be in conversation with those who are different um, than you. Um, so I wonder how much of this, of, of communication of this nature is happening in society today, because it seems like most of it is just one way communication. It's, it's monologue rather than a dialogue. Um, so as followers of Christ, it is our commission to be of the same mind. And, and that does not mean to be of the same views, but rather to be messengers of harmony and, and diffusers of flames. Uh, and especially, and I take us back to the, to the justified self-righteousness, especially those of us who think they are right, right? And don't we all? Uh, so the, the liberal thinkers among us, the progressive thinkers among us, the more enlightened ones, as we like to call ourselves, I think the bigger responsibility really falls on our shoulders. And it does require a lot of humility to, um, to, to choose and continue to choose to listen to our siblings and affirm their humanity when we completely disagree with um, much of what they say. And in this season of Epiphany, and we are reminded that we can only know about God what God chooses to reveal to us. Uh, and that really reminds us of our place in this universe. Epiphany is a reminder that we do not own the truth, but all of us, with, with all of our differences, we are witnesses to that one truth that is uh, God's love and affirmation to all humans. And as we are reminded of that, it should humble us to accept others' otherness. So may the Spirit humble us enough to listen. Amen. Um,